Hello, fifth graders. Welcome to lesson 5.3, Simplifying Fractions. Let's get started. Today's lesson objective is I can simplify fractions by finding a common denominator and dividing with 100% accuracy in multiple attempts. Please pause now to write your I can and by statements in your digital math notebook. All right, guys. Simplifying fraction means to make the fraction as small as it can get. That doesn't mean to write it smaller. It means that the fraction has no numbers in common on the top and the bottom other than the number one. We have been making equivalent fractions, which sometimes get bigger, but we also need to be able to make them smaller. Sometimes smaller fractions are easier to add or subtract when we know what a common denominator is. In order to simplify a fraction, we need to know the factors of those numbers. So here we have the number six. In order to make a six, we could multiply one times six. Remember our factor rainbows? We could also multiply two times three. Those are the only ways to make a six. I could also write this like this, one times six and two times three. This is just another way to show this. In order to make a 12, I could do one times 12, two times six, or three times four. So then what we wanna do is we wanna find a number that can go into both of our numbers. We want what we call a common factor, the greatest common factor to be specific. So GCF comp stands for the greatest common factor, the biggest number they have in common. For example, I see that they both have the number one, but is there a number bigger than that they share? Well, they both share the number two, okay? I also see that they both share the number three. All right, all of these are good, but now look, they both share the number six. So six is the biggest number that they both share. So the greatest common factor is six. Now, in order to make six twelfths into the smallest form that it can be, I'm going to divide both the top and the bottom by six. We know that six over six equals one, and we know that 10 divided by one is 10, and two divided by one is two. Whenever I divide by one, my answer stays the same. So by dividing six over six, I'm not changing my number, I'm just pulling out all of the extra pieces. Now we can divide. Six divided by six is one. 12 divided by six is two. So the simplified version of this number would be one half. Let's try this one more time with the numbers nine and 12. In order to make a nine, I could multiply one times nine or three times three. In order to make a 12, we could do one times 12, two times six or three times four. Now we wanna find our greatest common factor, the number that goes into both numbers the biggest time. So I know that one goes into both, that's not very big, and it looks like the only other number they share is three. So the greatest common factor is three. So I wanna divide the top and the bottom by three in order to get my reduced fraction. Nine divided by three is three, and 12 divided by three is four. So I could simplify that fraction down to three fourths. Let's keep going and you can practice with me. All right, in your digital math notebook, you have these fractions and you can practice as we go through this lesson. When I think of the number 14 and 70, 70 is a really big number. So I may not wanna write a fraction factor rainbow for the number 70. So the nice thing about simplifying is that it doesn't necessarily have to be done in one step. I know that both of these numbers are even. So if I divide both numbers by two, then it may not be the simplest I can make my number, 
but it is going to get it smaller. So 14 divided by 2 is 7, and 70 divided by 2 is 35. Now it's a little bit smaller, and we can stop and ask ourselves again, is there any numbers that go into 7 and 35? Well, 7 is a prime number. The only way to make 7 is 1 times 7. So that means that we're all done. So when in doubt, always start with 2 over 2 if your numbers are even, and that will at least get you a little bit smaller and maybe all the way done. Let's try that method again. Let's start just by dividing 2 over 2. There might be another number, and you might see it, but let's start with 2. Half of 14 is 7, and half of 28 is 14. Now, you might look at this and see, oh, well, 7 and 14, I know that 7 goes into 14. So I could reduce this number again, simplify it, by dividing by 7 over 7. 7 goes into 7 one time, and 7 goes into 14 two times. So the simplest I could make this fraction would be 1 half. Now, let's say you recognized from the get-go that 14 and 28 both share a common factor of 7. Well, then you could have divided by 7 right away. 7 into 14 is 2, and 7 into 28 is 4. And then maybe you saw, okay, I know that 2 goes into 4 two times, so that would be 1 half. So you might take a different path to get to a simplified fraction, but in the end, you know you're done when the numbers only share the number 1. All right, last number, 10 and 5. I know that 10 and 15 share the number 5. So I'm going to divide both the top and the bottom by 5. 10 divided by 5 is 2, and 15 divided by 5 is 3. So the smallest or the simplest I can make that number is 2 thirds. Pause now to type this into your digital math notebook. All right, friends, time for the lesson activity. I'll get you started and then you can finish on your own. On the first example, we have 8 twentieths. Well, let's think. I know 2 goes into 8. I know 4 goes into 8. I know 8 goes into 8, but I know 8 doesn't go into 20. So let's go with 4 because I know 4 also goes into 20. So you can hear me kind of thinking through my process. How do I make an 8? 1 and 8, okay? 8 doesn't go into 20. 2 and 4. 2 goes into 4 and 4 goes into 4. So that's how I'm getting to these numbers. So I'm going to use my 4 because it's the biggest number that I have on my 8 that isn't an 8 because I know 8 doesn't go into 20. So now I'm going to divide by 4 over 4. 8 divided by 4 gives me 2. And 20 divided by 4 is 5. So my simplest fraction is 2 fifths. All right, let's think about how we make the number 6. I could make it with 1 times 6 or 2 times 3. So let's think about the number 12. I could make 1 and 12, 2 and 6, or 3 and 4. The biggest number that these numbers have in common is the number 6. If I divide both the top and the bottom by 6, what would my answer be? You solve and type your answer into your digital math notebook. Great job so far, fifth graders. You're almost finished. Make sure your notes are complete and then complete your exit slip and be ready to see your teacher. Great job.